you'd like to take your orders for service, and please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Please be seated. So we pray together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we take a moment to acknowledge where we have all messed up in one way or another. So let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of God. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins. He'll strengthen you by his Spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Please would you stand. So we say together the Gloria. <coughs> Glory, Glory to God, God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. So as we stand, let us pray. Almighty God, whose only Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence, give us pure hearts and steadfast wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our reading. First reading is from Genesis chapter 15, verses 15 to 21. Realising that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, What if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph, saying, Your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him, and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good, in order to preserve the numerous people as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. 
In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Romans chapter 14, verses 1 to 12. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarrelling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honour of the Lord. Also, those who eat, eat in honour of the Lord, since they give thanks to God, while those who abstain, abstain in honour of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live up to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please, would you stand for the Gospel reading? Alleluia, alleluia. We do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord God. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you seventy-seven times. For this reason the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed. And they went and reported to their lord all that had taken place. Then his lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger his lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Holy Christ. May I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. I'd like to tell you two stories today that touch on the Gospel reading that we just heard. Some years ago, we were in a Bible study group that met at various people's homes. In our group, we had a young man that I'll call Pete. 
Pete had been homeless for a little while and was always in and out of trouble. For a little while, we gave him money when he asked for it, but eventually we realised that that wasn't really helping him. We still wanted to show our love for him, and so we encouraged him to attend our Bible study because we always used to share a meal together when we met, so at least he would get fed each week and be able to spend some time with us in a safe environment. Now, Bibles are quite personal things, aren't they? One member of the group, Dan, had a special zip-up Bible that had been given to him on his baptism. Because it was a zip-up one, it had little cards and messages tucked between the pages, and Dan would highlight passages that meant something to him in yellow highlighter pen. He really loved that Bible. One week, Dan turned up to our study group and asked if anyone had seen his Bible. None of us had. He'd lost it. He was absolutely gutted. For weeks, we continued to meet for Bible study, Dan now using a new Bible to replace his lost one. About six weeks after Dan lost his Bible, we noticed Pete reading in the corner. It was a zip-up Bible. Dan looked at it, did a double take and said, hey, is that my Bible? Pete denied it. Dan asked Pete to hand it over and Dan looked up one of his favourite Bible passages and there it was, highlighted in yellow. It was definitely Dan's missing Bible. The week it had gone missing, Dan had given Pete a lift home and Pete had seen Dan's Bible and had taken it. He just stole it from the door of Dan's car. I can't remember how the rest of the group responded, but I remember being absolutely livid about this. I steamed about it all the way home and going through my head were thoughts like after all we've done for him and he knew how much that Bible meant to him and how could he be so callous? I was ranting and raving in anger and I began to pray about it and I suddenly felt God say, I always forgive you. My anger against Pete was very similar to the rage that the man in the parable has against the man who owes him after he has been forgiven a far bigger debt. It was trivial, petty almost. It wasn't even a sin against me. Dan had far more reason to be angry with Pete than I did. Bishop Tom Wright describes forgiveness as being like the air in our lungs. To receive air in our lungs, we have to exhale the old air first. If we try and hold it in, we will soon stop breathing altogether. By focusing on the act that Pete did, I was ignoring the fact that God is merciful to me every time I sin and get things wrong. To use another of Jesus' teachings, I was focusing on the speck in Pete's eye, forgetting about the log in my own. We were upset about Pete's behaviour, but we didn't make him leave our group. He carried on coming to our Bible study after returning the stolen Bible, and I felt that I learnt something about forgiveness. The second story I'd like to tell you is about someone called Megan Phelps. Megan was born into the Phelps family who have a famous church in America called Westboro Baptist Church. This family is famous for all the wrong reasons. They preach a message of God's hate for gay people and Jews and dead soldiers. They picket soldiers' funerals with signs saying, pray for more dead children. Megan first joined in one of these protests at the age of five holding a sign she couldn't read, which read, Gays are worthy of death. This is the world Megan grew up in. When she was older, she started to promote the views of her church using Twitter, sending out messages that were the equivalent of the signs her family held up at funerals and by the roadside. Most people would respond to Megan's tweets in kind, shouting her down telling her she was a despicable person for saying such things. But a few people began to respond to Megan 
with compassion and curiosity. Megan began to have conversations with a small handful of people who decided that there must be a human being with feelings on the other side of that computer. Slowly but surely, Megan eventually was helped to see that the teachings she had grown up with were nothing to do with the Bible or Jesus. And Megan has now left Westboro Baptist Church and she helps people to work with those with extremist views. Megan would never have left that horrible church without people showing her some mercy and compassion. She even ended up staying in the home of a Jewish rabbi that she had protested against. Megan ultimately experienced forgiveness. Having watched her speak about her experiences, I thought to myself, if I saw a hateful tweet like that online, would I respond compassionately? Would I seek more to understand than the understood? We humans like to see everything in transactional terms. I scratch your back, you scratch mine. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. I forgive you seven times and you forgive me seven times back. Jesus comes to us and rips up that rule book and gives us a new way to live. Jesus shows us that compassion and forgiveness must be a way of life. It is not about numbers. It is not about keeping a record of wrongs. Remember that beautiful line from 1 Corinthians 13, love keeps no record of wrongs. It is about always choosing forgiveness. To practice forgiveness, even if we don't feel it yet. I don't think Jesus is necessarily saying forgive 77 individual sins. It could be forgive that one sin 77 times over until you are free of it. I think there is an acknowledgement in Jesus' teaching that forgiveness is not a one-time act, but a continual orientation of the heart. I'm sure that's why we have our confession every single Sunday. It's a constant life orientation. The man in the parable is forgiven a massive debt, but it doesn't change his heart. Jesus is not saying forgive and forget, or saying that in forgiving, that that somehow dismisses the wrong done. Forgiveness as a way of life is allowing us to live life to the full, to breathe in and out deeply. As we receive God's forgiveness into our lungs, we breathe that same forgiveness out to one another. Clinging on to our anger and hurt will only cripple us and keep us in the shadows. I think the prayer of St Francis sums up this teaching. So let us finish by praying it together and read it on our behalf. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring love. Where there is offence, let me bring pardon. Where there is discord, let me bring union. Where there is error, let me bring truth. Where there is doubt, let me bring faith. Where there is despair, let me bring hope. Where there is darkness, let me bring your light. Where there is sadness, let me bring joy. O oh Master, let me not seek as much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that one receives, it is in self-forgetting that one finds, it is in pardoning that one is pardoned, it is in dying that one is raised to eternal life. Amen.
please stand as you are able as we come to declare our faith together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, his only begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified and the conscious pilot. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please sit or kneel as we come to pray. God of mercy, your love overwhelms us with your generous forgiveness. Open our hearts to extend this charity to all who are penitent. May your church be a place where deliverance abounds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, you hold before us a model of justice tempered by mercy. Inspire those in political office to promote the restoration of those who offend. We pray especially for all who work in our prisons, praying for the work of prison chaplains, especially as they manage the pandemic in a very difficult situation. Bless the work of rehabilitation centres and projects. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, you release us from a debt we can never repay. We pray for all out of their debt that are out of their debt financially and exposed to the unscrupulous. We pray especially for those struggling because of the pandemic. Pray for the work of our local food bank, the Freedom Project. We also pray for all nations dealing with the pandemic. Continue to pray for the work on a vaccine against COVID-19. We pray for the people struggling with the wildfires in America. We pray for places of political unrest, including Lebanon and Belarus. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. God of mercy, your compassion challenges us to work for relief from suffering. Pour out your healing presence on all who struggle to cope with their illness of whatever kind. We pray especially by name for Wyatt and Garrett Ruthven, Barbara Needham, Veronica Blackwell, Margaret Gilmore, Luke Fair, Sandra Mellor, Chloe Parks, Betty Wood, George Naylor, Elizabeth Hamilton, Robert Verity, Lily Wood, Michelle Jenkins, Audrey Wilkinson, Ethel Hadfield, and Jackie Burns.
stand between us and all that would destroy us. Lord, in your mercy. In our prayer. God of mercy, whether we live or die, we are yours. Revive in your love all who have died. Pray for those who have recently died. Baby Walter Lockwood, Reverend David Hull, Bill Ragg, and Gladys Jones. And we also remember Mary Ward, whose anniversary falls at this time. Bring us all to the place where sins are cancelled and we dwell in the equity of your love. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Merciful Father, and accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So please stand as you are able for the peace. So that you know when it comes to communion, we're receiving just in the bread form, um, so you'll be instructed to come up uh, when the time's right by, by one of the uh, church wardens. I think we're getting used to it now, aren't we? So you, you just queue up in the usual way, um, maybe just, just take your mask off to receive the bread and then pop your mask back on once you've, once you've eaten it and then return carefully to your seat. If you would prefer to have a blessing, if you bring the order of service up with you, it's much easier if you do that than if you try and communicate with me because we both be wearing masks so we can't tell what each other's saying. So if you, bring, if you bring the booklet up with you, I'll know that that means that you would prefer a blessing. Blessed are the peacemakers. They shall be called children of God. We meet in the name of Christ and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And so we greet each other at a safe distance with a sign of God's peace. Peace be with you all. Everybody stand. Let the great ones scattered in the fields and the great ones, great ones dispersed on the hillside and now reunited on this table in bread and wine. So, Lord, may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks for the grace. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, who lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed 
Peter is faithful to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, united in prayer and the breaking of bread, and one in joy and simplicity of heart. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Almighty God, God, we thank you for leading us with the body and the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be the end of his sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. May God give you grace never to sell yourself short, grace to risk something big for something good, grace to remember that the world is too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.